uh, Cole can Cole can get some gears of his own. I mean, he's going to turn back and, and get it on right here. So I like this matchup. We've seen some bright spots with this young man, the 20-year-old from Burleson, Texas. Can he add another? Oh, no, don't lean back. And not where he wanted to end up. Slammed against the corner post of the buck and shoots. But J-Dub, you said it. He leaned back and it cost him. Well, you watch right about here, he's sitting good, but then he's a little behind and he just never cuts across that corner and tries to catch back up and, wow. Ouch. And Cole Livingston making his way back to the locker room, but you can see uh, Chase Outlaw there sneaking behind him, talking to him all the way back. And this is a guy that, you know, much to our conversation earlier, you talk about Chase bringing that in. Bosa better not, he does. Yep, much like you thought, J-Dub, Bull goes to the left, and therefore Barbosa goes down, and it's an 0 for 2 weekend for the Brazilian. Well, and a lot like Cannon Cravens, and it's going to be a, a real consistent scenario most all time in bull riding. If you get that free arm behind you, watch how bad it gets behind him here and how it twists your hips to the outside. Everything's the same. And it's so basic and so easy for me to sit here and explain. <laughs> and then to have to, for somebody to go do it, uh, it turns from the easiest thing to, to show someone and talk about and explain it to the hardest job in the world to complete. But when they're V'd to the back, boy, it's hard to get them to step up and get off of you. He's on the clock, so and if, I, I, he's not going to take a zero. I know that. Oh, hey, he took a pop, though. Hoo-yah! Colton Jesse seemed to benefit from the direction change, but then Chain Smoker decided to blow it all out, and Jesse's on the ground. And just like we said, he's going to look one way and go back the other, and he's going to kick hard. He's going back here. He kicks good, but... Colton just overcompensates into the middle of that spin and doesn't catch a hold with that outside foot and just slides off. Shorty, what are you seeing from that bull? Well, that bull's kind of uh, leaning on the gate. He had his right foot over the point of his shoulder. Here we go. Settle down. That got wild towards the end, but Zorro straight out of the starting blocks. Cravens was able to keep up right from the get-go, but just comes up about a second and a half short. Well, Zorro's just a little faster in that spin than a lot of our bulls, but he doesn't have quite the kick as some of them. So when they're fast like that, you can get a little wilder, but you still have to get back to the front and get square in the middle. And it's hard to catch square when it's going one direction so fast. The Bulls have all the answers in this week's championship round, but they Every bull has their own set of abilities that they work with. Not only is Triplet down, but Biker Bobs gives him a little love tap on the way out. Frustration for Matt. That 89 and three quarters is going to get him back. But he's now going to have an uphill battle to win the weekend. Well, this is what I talked about right here. You see how he set back? And when he did it, just put all the pressure on his arm. His feet come up in front of him and uh, whipped him out of this foot right there. See how he, but he's kicking loose with his outside foot. He's doing that right. It just, the speed and the power of this bull. This is another one of those bulls that's probably put on 100 pounds of mature muscle in the last year and a half. Kind of gets in the air, going to find him a spot out there, about three or four jumps, and come to the right should. Ouch. Maybe another rewrite. From that angle, that went from bad to worse for Dylan Smith very quickly. The clock says 2.15, but right from that first move, he was out of position. Yeah, that, that one came clean and just ripped the rope out of his hand when he left there. You see that bull push against the back of that chute when he left, and it just launched him forward. He's sitting flat of his butt when that bull comes up in the front, and then when he kicks, he just meets it. And his hand comes out of his rope and it just launches him. Ooh. Yowzers. Scary landing for Dylan. Well, following his three for three performance in Duluth. Oh! Hey, hey, hey! 
Thunder Road brought the lightning and then the crack before the thunder. Scotty Knapp takes a shot. The 28-year-old is going to be feeling the effects of that one for a while. Yeah, going to turn out backwards there and kind of has him pulled down, so he tries to get away from that. And this bull's got some moves, you know. He, he doesn't just fall out of there and spin. He, he'll suck back. He'll roll a little bit, change directions. And when you get back and everything gets stiff, there's only one direction for you to go, and that's forward up on his head. So we sit on six qualified rides in round number two after a dozen qualified rides last night, working our way towards a championship round. At the moment, Stetson Lawrence would have the number one pick. Smooth operator is already one of the sport's best, but he is working towards changing that classification to legendary. He's one of nine Chad Burger Bulls we'll see in the championship round. Are you waiting? Keep Austin! Keep Austin! From the get-go, Lawrence went after Biker Bob, but it's the bull that has the final say. That buck off, costly for Stetson. Yeah, and Biker Bob has just gotten better and better with time, and he's grown up, he's gotten bigger and stronger, and he's able to finish guys off. Now, once he gets him in a little bit of a bad situation, he's got the power now to finish these guys off, but what a good bull that is. And, you know, every lefty dreams of being able to pick Biker Bob. Lawrence picked the bull that he thought would not only suit him, but as Justin McBride just said, suits left-handed riders.